Hello to all the bargain board, argument annoyed, and deal disconcerted. Last time we talked about misconceptions and our mindset going into the car buying experience, remembering that on both sides of the negotiation, honesty is the best policy. Now we're coming to the most slippery of slopes when it comes to the car shopping experience, haggling the best price. We're going to talk about haggling, what it means for you, and why it's actually good for the customer. That's right, good for the customer. But there are a lot of dealerships that don't haggle. And the big question I get most times is, Why even haggle? I literally don't haggle for anything else that I buy. Why haggle for a car? Let me first bring this point up in response. You don't actually have to haggle the price of your car. You could simply see the price listed in the window. Your salesman could present that price to you, plus taxes and fees, and every dealership has fees. That's a discussion for a different video altogether. But you could look at that final price and agree to it. And if it's a price you didn't agree to, you might ask yourself the question, why am I looking at a vehicle I can't afford anyway? So maybe you prefer it this way? I really like this truck. Great, it costs this much. Well, I can't afford that much. It costs this much. I can't afford this much. Oh, well, then you can have this shoe. But I don't want that shoe. Then get off my lot. There's people with money here. That's an exaggeration, of course. Well, sort of an exaggeration. There's a lot of no-haggle dealerships out there where that's going to basically be your interaction. So, why is it important to have the ability to haggle? Haggling gives you control. Now, in most cases, you don't haggle the price of the things that you purchase, though you're allowed to. That's right, I said you're allowed to. You can go into any store, anytime, anywhere, and ask for a lower price. Does that mean that you'll always get it? No, but you'd be amazed how often you can. That's a nice TV. Yes, it is. I want to buy it. It costs this much. That's a lot. Are there any rebates or incentives on it? I don't know. Could you ask the manager? Because I'd really like to buy it if I can get a discount. Let me check. Okay, I'm back. That was fast. Sure was. So, any rebates? The manager says you can use this coupon for 10% off. Sweet. It's not always that easy, of course, but getting a deal is pretty awesome. So what's wrong with a no-haggle dealership? Well, nothing in and of itself. But if you're dealing with, say, a larger dealership that can always guarantee that you're going to get a good car and can always back up their work, you're probably going to be paying a lot for that car, maybe even too much for that car. And the problem is, you don't get any say in that at all. If you're dealing with a smaller dealership that has a no-haggle practice and the prices already seem pretty cheap, be cautious. If they have low prices and they aren't willing to negotiate, probably means that they don't feel that they have a lot of value in their vehicles. For example, let's say that dealer A has a sedan worth $15,000. Dealer B has an almost identical or maybe even just the same sedan for $1,000 less. Now, of course, this seems like a no-brainer situation. However, what if dealer A is willing to negotiate? Whereas dealer B is not. The biggest reason for this is dealer A feels that their car is worth this much, but they are willing to do what it takes to earn your business. Dealer B knows that their car doesn't have as much value. Now, is this always the case? No, of course not, but oftentimes it is. So the question that you should be asking yourself isn't so much, should I be haggling with the dealer? It's, what should I be haggling with the dealer? If you're buying a car for cash, or you're more concerned about how much you're paying in the long run, the thing you should be negotiating is the out-the-door price. This is the total price, plus taxes and fees that you're going to be paying at the very end. The dealership owns every vehicle on their lot for a certain amount of money. In the event of a used car, maybe they've had to do work on them to bring them up to safer working order. And in the event of a new car, they at least usually have to do a safety inspection on them. And they didn't get that car for free either. They had to buy it. That means that the dealership has an investment in every vehicle on their lot. And they're a business that employs people, which means they need to make money. Now, every dealership is different and has a different cutoff point for when the negotiation has to end. But understand something. If the dealership isn't willing to do any more negotiating, that means there's nothing to be gained by doing business with you. And if you push it, you can negotiate yourself right out of a deal altogether. The other major thing to negotiate has to do with financing and working in a month-to-month -month budget. And that has to do with haggling your monthly payment. 
The plus side is it not only gives you more control over your monthly expenses, this number is better for the dealership to try to negotiate because they have a lot more options on how to help you hit your goal. Of course, there's a lot more that goes into negotiation than just these things, but these are the most important things to be negotiating when you're trying to affect your bottom line. Tips for salesmen. Be sure you know what your customer's needs are. If they have a set cash amount and they're not financing, then you shouldn't be looking at vehicles that are going to be going over their budget once taxes and fees are applied. And be clear on the payment expectations for your finance customers. Tips for shoppers. If you have a monthly payment goal that you've got to hit, share that right away. Make sure that your salesman knows exactly where the top is and how much room he's got to play with there to get to your monthly goal. If you have a bottom line, out the door number that you need to hit, don't shop too far above that price range so you can realistically haggle it down. Once again, thanks for tuning in everybody. I am Barry the Auto Mediator and if you have any pressing questions about haggling, feel free to drop them in the box below. I'll try to get to as many of them as I can and heck, they might just inspire my next video. So thanks again to everybody and happy buying.